Hi everyone. Hi guys. We're back again. Here we are. Um, and we wanted to talk to you today. We're going to dive straight in because these are so good. There's going to be none of this chit chat shit. No, no um, stopping and talking none of that. Talking We're going to talk about perfume. Um, and today we've got a house that um, we've kind of had on our radar for a while, haven't we? And it's I, one that's been suggested to us a few times. Yeah, yeah. and rightly so. Um, and we, I was just talking to Dan. Um, I smelt these a little while ago, and actually over the summer I was working in Sweden for over a month or two, almost seven, six, seven weeks, um, and I tried these in a shop in Sweden, and I put the little testers inside my score of the opera that I was working on, and every day when I opened the score at the piano, I was just greeted with these amazing wafts, um, not from the loft, because that's here. Sandy, but but it, it was beautiful. Wafts yeah. from the piano. Wafts from the piano from, from the Swedish um, area of Stockholm. The, and it was really beautiful. I love this house. But these are actually... I've forgotten and, them. And um, these are houses... Because I, I then bought a whole load of these samples. They come in nice little cards. I bought all the samples about in November. So I've had these for a while as well. So we're actually... We've tested quite thoroughly yeah. this house. Um, it's a really exciting house. It's, it's an really all good, it? natural... Um, uh, house, which yeah, is not a rarity. It's not necessarily something I, I don't think we go out of our way to find all natural um, no, no. fragrances at all. But Hiram Green, who is, I think I'm right in saying he's a Canadian born who lives in the Netherlands, wanted to challenge the um, any kind of preconceptions of natural perfumery that we could easily think that they are dull, straightforward, mm. solar floors, don't last that long, that yeah. massage. Um, so he's tried to challenge all those things and, and my God. I <laughs> think he's won, he's, hasn't he's, he? He's really succeeded because these are exciting and with lots of them have enormous personality and lots yeah. of them have enormous performance. They are real They've, smack you around yeah. the face fragrances, some of them. They're big and... But bold. they're also at the same time elegant and beautifully blended and it's a, it's a sort of... A lot of contrast, a lot yeah. of flip sides. Yeah, but we get, uh, yeah, as I said, a lot of personality. There's lots of things I've, uh, you know, within these these uh, seven fragrances we've got here, which I don't think I've smelt fragrances like them. There's no. a, few, a few of them in particular which stand out. Let's let's get into them. I will just say, if you've seen our uh, some of our previous videos, you will know that after sampling all of these, I bought one of the fragrances. I'm not going to tell you which. It's a secret. If, you, if you've seen the video, you know the I answer. I can see it over there, uh, but it's, I'm it's, not going to tell you. But if you, if you haven't seen the video, I'm going to wait to the end to tell you which one I bought after testing. But let's get stuck in. So what do we have first? So this is Voyage, Voyage. 2019. So That's um, so last year. It's, yeah, it's so nice. Yeah. Sorry, I wanted to make that joke. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah, just... um, and it's called 2019 because there was originally, a, what, it was originally released in 2013. Yes, I'm going to have to, I've written quite a lot of notes here. So it was yeah, originally released in 2015. It's so good. It's a beautiful, wow, wow smell. Gosh. Like, it's really good. Oh my God. This is this is a really big, exciting, good perfume making, opulent, opulent smell. Just to say, well, so these are. Yeah, what were your thoughts then? You jotted it down in this exquisite tone. I should also just quickly say these are all EDPs, all yeah. 50 mil, all 155 euros. So reasonable. Um, so reasonable. I've got to say, but I think they are, I think they're all EDP, but a lot of them feel like they're X-ray. Um, yeah, a couple in here particularly had, had sort of yeah, extra like behaviour. Um, so this is Voyage 2019, which is inspired by Indian street markets. Mm. So I'm already getting little hints of why as well. <laughs> it was this beautiful kind of spiced amber. Yeah. But with this as well, the other thing I noticed, I, I looked on his uh, on the website. He does list some notes, and I I felt his list of notes. Um, I didn't always get all of them, but they were always quite short, and I, there were some fragrances when I smelt a lot more than he listed. This is one where I get a lot of florals from this. Yeah, huge. I get this really intense kind of cluster of white mm. florals. I mean, there's, there's definitely some orange blossomy, orange kind of florals. And yeah, there's quite, an, there's quite an oily sort of thing going on here yeah. as well, like a mandarin oil or something. I don't know if it's quite pettigrain, but it's that. I don't know if it's just the quality of oils is such that you get the, the you know the suggestion of oily fruit. Oh, that's so good! Uh, again, and I, I know I hark on about this all the time, but it's something I love in perfume. Is I immediately get a slight vintage kick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Definitely. I get a little bit of classic, classic turn of the century galan. I think it's just it's because of the the 
it, I don't think this is kind of, there are some of these which mm. are, like, are definite out and out florals, and I don't think this is one which is necessarily marketed as floral, but I do get this real, oh, slightly indolic white floral quality to it. Yeah. Must, there must be jasmine, there's some kind of stick, kind of uh, thick, sticky, slightly chewy jasmine. <coughs> do you know what else I'm getting a little bit? If you could, if you could take a, like a churros, mm. fry some churros and fit it with like a linden, a linden jelly or something, <laughs> yeah. There's a slight sort of, there's a slight fried mm. something going on there. Well, because it's, in, I think, for that's, linden blossom that's, that's jelly. That's what he's aiming for, because I think this one is, which is inspired by uh, Indian street markets. And if you've ever gone to India, you know that they've got, I mean, like really, 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 really big I've never sweet been. tooth. But oh, are they? I didn't yeah, know they, they, I mean, loads of sweet. Um, um, yeah, you, they're, 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 as well as, you know, we think of India, we think of, initially think of curry but they're really into their sweets and their fried yeah. sweets and their, so I think oh. that, that feeling of fried food and sweet really desserts I think you're absolutely you're right on there and this the combination on, together on one hand this is amber and spice but I actually get so many of these juicy chewy quite sweet florals but also I get this something quite indolic there as well yeah absolutely now it's starting to go a little bit green and I'm getting I'm getting a, like a really beautiful, like clean linen, like a really clean linen musk. Mm. Just starting to poke its head. I know you mean. I know you mean. What I mean overall, what is interesting about this fragrance and some of the others is that I feel that there's. If you get up really close with it, there feels like there's a lot going on. Mm. But if you just if you smell it with a little bit more of a distance, you feel that it's completely homogenous. And yeah. what you're getting is this. Um, you're kind of getting kind of a spiced amber with a little, little bit of floral. That's yeah, what you get at a distance. Funny. But when you get close up, I feel there's much more floral, which is also indolic as well as, opposed, as, well as bitter. Well, it's an interesting point, isn't it? Like, whenever we're smelling stuff here for you guys and we're, we're, we're sort of chatting perfume. I just dropped on the floor, but don't worry about that. The sample, we'll get that. It's in the organ, it's fine. Um, we, we're not reviewers, by the way. We smell stuff that we love, or we talk about stuff that we love. But the point is that when we smell here we're trying to pick out individual things and we're trying to dissect mm. it a little bit but of course if someone walked past wearing this and we never knew what it was yeah. we wouldn't be going oh linden a bit of that a yeah. little bit of this the, and this is the effect if you don't think about all those things yeah it is just a beautiful warm spicy amber with with a lovely fresh herbaceous and what's good is this i think white floral in a aspect. way if you were it's this is a very easy fragrance to wear oh, i God, think yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it, you know this is an everyday mm. Um, but if you're if that. you're a bit of a fragrance nerd, it's one you can get stuck in and really, yeah. really enjoy it and get a lot of pleasure and a lot of reward from. Your nose will be rewarded by by spending some time with these. Next, oh, that's so beautiful. We're going to move on because we've got Voyage. seven uh, to get through. Next one is this lovely. There you can see it. This lovely green juice arbole. Yeah. Um, which I think means grove. Yeah. In uh, in Spanish. Oof. I love this one. I remember this being one of my favourites in, wow. in Sweden. Um, I'm going to look at my notes again. So this is based on a Lorca. Mm. A text Lorca is an early 20th century Spanish poet. And the line is tree, tree, dry and green. Oh, there's a beautiful, really fresh, slightly boozy apple that I'm getting there. Mm. I'm surprised people describe this as just... This is one I'd heard people talk about and say it was just a patchouli scent. This is not like any patchouli scent no. I, 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 I've experienced. There's a very um, herbal quality to this. Yeah. I get this kind of apple quality. I also got a slight medicinal twang to yeah. it as well. And patchoulis can do that as well. They can be mm. they can be chocolatey and earthy, or they can actually sometimes be really they can be really mm. bright and heady and slightly medicinal. Mm. The other smokier. thing I get actually. Well, spray, spray on the card. I, I, when I put it on my skin, it's something which I didn't notice for a while. But I feel on the card, right from the beginning, you're getting coumarin. Qu really, quite a lot of coumarin. This is kind of like yeah. tonkery, like you get this kind of tonka beanie, kind of kind of creaminess, which stays all the way through. Um, and again, I was slightly. Oh, it's it made very, me think slightly vintagey. You know, as we've said, we're kind of attracted to that kind of gelani tonkery base. And I feel I'm like getting that from the beginning. Yeah. 
And I, yeah, when I wore this on skin, I felt as it dried down, it became more about the tonka and, and, and the patchouli. Whereas at the beginning, it, there's a lot of kind of swimming, bright green, slightly medicinal, herbaceous. Yeah, but it's nice. It has a real centre to it. It feels like a good, like a good soprano mm. that has a real centre and a core to the mm. sound. But then this halo of beauty around it, and mm. you know that that thing is just mm. going to get deeper and earthier. It feels like a sort of fragrance that starts mm. up here and just needs to settle into its own skin after a few hours. It does, and I think very it also beautiful. went through... Um, very beautiful. When I, again, when I, when I wore it on skin, I went through it in the mid, it passed through a little cedary phrase, little cedar mm. phrase where it got a bit more woody. Um, yeah, without, without ever turning into a kind of an out and out woody kind of cedary fragrance, yeah. it wasn't that. It's still, I think, a green fragrance. But that's a really beautiful, I don't know if it's apple or what it is, but you know, like the, the kind of not, I mean, real apples tend not to have a huge presence, but that like apple flavour that you sometimes get. Mm, and it's a really bright green. Yeah, I think it's a tart apple. Yeah. It's not like apple juice. No, no, no. But yeah, but really good. And then, and then I think, it, and then it does change later, and eventually the, the, the patchouli does become uh, perhaps a little bit more familiar. Yeah. But, you know, uh, when I say familiar, in what, the, what we what we expect to get from patchouli, a little bit drier, and it's the way it can, combines with that tonka yeah. vibe. But I don't think it the way it starts. For me, it doesn't feel like an out and out patchouli um, fragrance in the traditional no. you know, hippie patchouli. Or I don't get that at all. I mean, I was just thinking of some favourites of, of mine, you know, the sort of earthy things like Perfumum and... Hi! <laughs> um, but it's, it doesn't have that... It doesn't have that... I don't know, that damp soil aspect no. at all. No, it's, it's fresh and it's spring and it's green. Yeah. Which is not normally what we get from patchouli. No, I, I, exactly. I would happily wear this in spring and summer. Mm. As, as a, you know, a sort of fresh, a fresh thing with a lot of depth behind it. Absolutely, yeah. Speaking of fresh, it's really good and energetic. Let's so which, that's um, Arbolet. Yeah. Let's Arbolet. move on to the next uh, one. Luster. Um, I'll spray for you. Now this, I just had a little, I had a little sniff of the bottle without spraying, and I'm very excited again. So and I'll, I'll, I'll read you the little line from the oh, website. Imagine a sun rising over seemingly endless fields of roses in the heartland of Bulgaria, and mm. you know. Straight away, you get this really, really lovely rose. Very beautiful. Really, really quite austere rose as well. It's quite, it, it's quite yeah. a serious sort of brooding thing. And I feel mm. now. I tell me what you think. I didn't. I found I, on card I smelt more orris in the in the start. Actually, when I put it on skin, I didn't quite as much. But I retested these a couple of days ago, and I feel I feel you, you do get quite a lot of slightly leathery, maybe not leathery, maybe a chalky iris. Which adds to that kind of yeah. austere feel. Well, I'm getting something right. that's, I'm getting something that's a little bit like um, a sh sort of shaved carrot seed or something. Not shaved carrot seed, but yeah. carrot shavings. But I, or celery, that kind of savouriness. I, I get that from Oris in something, for instance, like Zonka. Ah, yeah. From Lartisan. I get that chalky, yes. carroty, quite austere feel. Yeah. Which I get from Iris. And I feel that's what I'm getting here. It gives it a slightly serious edge, doesn't it? Yes. Not that rose is all fun and whistles, but but it's not it's, a it's not a big juicy you know flamboyant fur coat no. wearing rose, is it? And no, and it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a big a big you know bleeding mm. gothic rose like the you know what is it um, portrait of a lady or portrait of a lady yeah. uh, the the Eldo yes yeah. odor odor mm. protection is it? no. And a bit of like uh, I don't know what it is. It's a note I sometimes get that reminds me of like that smell in a brand new carpet shop. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. yeah. No, like a, well, I think there's that also fresh new carpet thing. I don't know what that is. I'm I've never sure figured it out. I'm pretty sure there's frankincense or olibanum. There, there's there's incense ah. in here as well, which again I think adds to that slightly, slightly sparkling bit, uh, um, cold. Yeah, exactly. There's a very like a lean silvery edge to it, isn't there? Mm. Just running through it. Like, you know, it's almost, if, if you're imagining in, in terms of a fairy tale character, this is an evil queen. Yeah. It's it's a, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's, it's a cold hearted rose. I have to say, in, in all, um, I, you know, I really like these, but in all instances, this, this is one which when I wore it on the skin, I like the opening, but I got a little bit bored of it when I wore it because I, I found it wasn't 
I, I, I was smelling things which were more familiar to me than perhaps some of the others. Yeah, um, you know, we've worn a lot of, of rose yeah. things, rosy things. Mm. And it does it beautifully, but actually, yeah, I mean, is it saying anything brand new? Is it saying anything? It reminds me that, you know, that there's the Sven know. SP, Sven Pritzkleit, what's it, Frozen yeah. Rose? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember, but there's I one didn't, which, I wasn't which is, which was a, a similar, fan. which I think was Rose, Frankincense and Aldehydes. It was that similar kind of feeling. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that dusty rose that you get in London by Gallivant as mm -hmm. well. It's so a slightly austere, But it's interesting because you think Bulgarian rose is going to take you to something kind of rich, but it's actually quite austere, as you say. I do like it though. I, uh, yeah, I mean it's good. The quality is there for sure, isn't it? But I'm talking in terms of seven um, really exciting fragrances. Yeah, I mean we're, we're, being, we're nitpicking now because they're actually really good, but it's which one's, which one's one. wow us. Which one is this? Moon Blue. This, now this is amazing. This is really good. Now this is a big fragrance. Oh. <laughs> This is <laughs> this is one of the smells that my book was just wafting, and still is, by the way. If you open my Ariadante score by Handel, I mean that won't mean anything tonight. Of all, together. well, uh, uh, of the of the four fragrances we've sprayed, I mean, you almost you don't really need the card for that. I would say off the top of <laughs> off the top of the the smell here, fracas, carnal flower, eat mm. your heart out. This thing is it's a this thing it's punches them well along its way. Explosion. So it's called Moonflower oh. because um, I didn't know that's this, exactly what that, uh, Tuberose is known as the mistress of the night. Yeah, I've never heard that before. So this is a you know a little um, rhapsody on, on, on Tuberose, um, but I don't think I smell Tuberose yet. I'm I'm getting it, but I think that's purely because I've a, I've an association of Tuberose from other things mm -hmm. that I've smelt with that. I think I think this that indolic, I think, milky, metallic thing. I think when the first spray is not yet mm. that dewy, juicy, bubblegummy. See, I think it's more indolic, uh, kind of ylang ylang. Yeah. And maybe jasmine, but maybe maybe it's an aspect of tuberose. But I don't automatically think. No, I think it. I think later on you do you do get yeah. it. But, but this this big big explosion at the, at the beginning. It's very good. Um, do you know, actually, I don't know what it is, again, I don't really know anything, yeah, this is the thing you have to realise. <laughs> um, I find the aspect of, and this isn't to put you off at all, because this is really beautiful, but there's something of secretion magnifique in the opening of that, just something about the, this, it's a slightly milky, sour thing. Mm, I know what you mean, yeah. I mean, it's very beautiful, it doesn't smell like secretion magnifique at all, but in terms of a texture or a colour. Mm. Or a meta there's a me some metallic. Yeah, I, think, I think it's the way that indolic nature is can be um, slightly animalic. Slightly. That's, yeah, I think that's what it is. It, it's animalic without being from a traditional animalic source like Castoria or mm. Civet. I'm going to read my, my notes on this because this is one which did kind of change a bit as, as, as I wear it. Coconut, I got. Coconut. I got coconut. Ah. Which which kind of took it in a more tropical nature. I felt that after about mm, I can't remember 15 20 minutes, this big. Uh, in kind of indolic ylang ylang -y explosion kind of slowed down or dissipated perhaps because it was going a thousand miles an hour right yeah now. and it became a little bit more tuberosy and then there was some coconut which made it kind of tropical sexy creamy yeah. oily and there was also a bit of greenness like a francesco bianchi sort of territory mm. i've also written some spice that gives a slightly animalic feel which i got yeah I what is the spice there is, there is something there isn't there I don't know if it's just the animalic nature, but it's very sexy. It's flamboyant. Is there any immortelle in there? I wonder if it's something like that. I mean, it starts off flamboyant, and then I think it becomes a little bit more sexy, intimate. That is really good. It. But this is, wow. That is really good. If you like tuberose, if you like white florals, try it. Because yeah, honestly, it's brilliant. Even if you think you don't, just spray it, because this is just... As an olfactory experience, it's, it's wow. And if you think florals and white florals are not for you, or that they're very delicate, or they're somehow they're sort of feminine in some way, and they—I mean, I'm not assuming that it's all guys, it's not. But try this because it really is different. It's and again, it has that vintage nod. But it's big. It's wow. It's, it's huge, wonderful, theatrical. Thing. Yeah. It's like three D. It's like eight D. <laughs> yeah. If okay. that hasn't been invented yet, it should be. Dilettante. Um, That's us. Again, exactly. <laughs> Something, you know, slightly artistic, um, mm. maybe slightly high-minded. Um, here we go. 
Mm. Now, this, this was one where, when I, I read the description, so it's inspired by such simple pleasures as a stroll through a luscious garden after a rain shower. Yeah, yeah. I get a lot, and then, and then I remember reading his, the list of notes, and there were lots of orangey kind of th things, orange blossom and neroli, whereas what I really got for most of it, I got pettigrain, definitely, yeah. but it, I got oily green. Yeah. And what I made, of, I remember my, um, my uh, both my grandmas, but, uh, but one in particular, she used to always grow loads and loads and loads of green beans. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to stay with her, I remember going to water these green beans. Yeah. And these, the smell of these green beans growing on the vine. You nice. Know, there, were, there were loads of that. It's that kind of, yeah, this kind of viney green yeah. smell. And that beautiful thing you get in a greenhouse with proper, proper yeah. tomatoes on the vine. Yeah. And it's, I get yeah. a slight, um, I don't know, it's a slight piece, of a, like a cider vinegar or something, a little bit. Mm. I, yeah, I feel there's some balsamic quality to the, it. The, the, I feel like the kind of oily greenness has been wrapped up, which has almost become sharp. Yeah. Which is the. Yeah. It's very, very bracing. Yeah. It's very. And it's amazing that it's kind of fresh. Um, in a non-citrus and absolutely non-aquatic kind of way, isn't it? Yeah, it's and without being like massively over, it's not like massively over photorealistic. Like here's no, just an yeah. English garden smell. It's no. quite specific. It's quite subtle as well. Mm. It's you know, it's just sort of it's quite su subtly blended. It's, it's quite subtle but quite punchy as well. Yeah, but it's I, bang I on like, for yeah. what it's doing. I mean, we have to smell a really enormous <laughs> yeah. thing. That's, that could be swaying things. Yeah, it's bracing, it's quite serious again. Mm. It's, it's quite bold. I don't think there are that many things I've smelt like this. Get a little magic marker as well. A little hint of mag some magic yeah. markers, but I don't yeah. know what that is. But I wonder, again, if it's, there's something Can about... You grow them? There's some kind of oiliness of... I don't know if it is petigrain or some kind of green oiliness, which is quite... It's so focused that it's almost become sharp, medicinal... Yeah. Mm, no. It's an enigma, that one. Of mm. all of them that I've smelled so far, that one is the most enigmatic. Mm. It's, slightly cl it's slightly closed off and it's just saying, look, mm. you're going to have to work hard if you want me to reveal what I'm, mm. what I'm I, about, e even which on, I love. Even on skin, I remember when I, when I first tried it and I looked at notes and things, I expected it to turn really, really kind of orange blossomy, yeah. whereas it didn't. And maybe it's, it went a bit on the... Neroli, if you think of the indolic side of Neroli, yeah. it, it never went anywhere vaguely near a kind of colony kind of orange thing at all. Is there a little bit of basil or something going on there as well? There's definitely a kind of a slight herbaceous feel, and I wonder if that's mm. the. See, now I'm getting a little bit of uh, like Provence lavender. Mm. Like, do you get a little bit of that? Like a little bit of bumping into mouchoir? Yeah, a, li a little bit, maybe, yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's really good. In a potpourri kind of way. A yeah. Bit, a little bit. I like it. Uh, mysterious, though. I think I'm going to have to smell that a little bit more. Right. We're now going to move on to... Actually, uh, uh, w in the introduction, I told a slight lie. Before we did any of this sampling, a, a while ago, when I saw that Hyde won um, the prize at the Art and Old Factory uh, Awards yes. last year, this is the first one I looked into because I thought... Birch tar, smoky bomb. We love Let's all try that. this. Um, and birch tar, smoky bomb. It definitely is. I mean, look at that card. It's already so it's I mean, I don't know if you need it, but kind I don't know on the website. Tiny tinge there. If this is whoa. <laughs> oh, see, that's so incredible. It really is. Wow, wow. <laughs> oh. That is a big. I mean, I know we said Moonbloom was big, but this is this is set fire to your car. Big. <laughs> you know, there's a story, and I don't know if it's true or not, but there's a story of, of I think it's one of these urban myths, that someone was swimming out mm. at sea, and one of these helicopters came and picked him up, it, you know, one of the forest fighting helicopters, and picked him up in this massive bucket thing that it has, and carried him and dropped him to his death in the middle of a forest fire, along with all the water, which sounds like an awful mm. way to die, but that's being dropped into the middle of a forest fire, mm. right there. I mean, and then some, and some other yeah. things going on, but my God, the I other, love it. The Beautiful. other thing I, I, I wondered, and I, he doesn't mention a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde thing on it, but when I, when I wore it, 
I also get a quite an elegant citrusy bergamot and lemon quality to it. Mm. Now, and I don't know, I, I don't know if I'm completely making this up, but I almost, I wondered if that was the Dr. Jekyll bit and the Mr. Hyde bit. Yeah. Is, I mean, it might not be anything to do with Mr. Hyde. This is just the way I interpreted it. But I felt there's this kind of big, smouldering, scary, birch tarry thing. But somewhere in there, there was quite an elegant, refined, um, straight-laced, citrusy thing going on as well. But you know what? I think, I think our imagination can steer us anywhere. Yeah, maybe. If I said to you now, smell that and don't think of yeah. smoke and bonfires, or think of Dr. Pepper instead. Yeah. Do you get, I mean, I get it like Doc's Pepper, Coca-Cola, Dandelion and Burdock, if you want to. Yeah, I get a load There's of... There's a slight sweet, like, undertone of sweetness. bacon. Yeah, it's very good. But... Smoked you, bacon with a bit of maple, maybe. Yeah. But then the other thing, which I said to you I get a lot of, is malt. Yes. Almost, I don't know if you, yeast is, <laughs> sounds like such a negative word, but you know, like, that kind of malt, malt milk, malt, what's yeah. that malt drink? Horlicks. Yeah, 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 like, like, like Hall of yeah. I don't know, yeah, for Americans, but... Uh, um. Sometimes when I come out of... You, I mean, Dan has actually lived on my road before. Um, mm. When I come out in the mornings, sometimes there's a huge malty smell in the air from some brewery that's nearby. Yes. And yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, but that combined with the, if it's like if someone's lit a bonfire or something overnight. I, well, I, I live, where I live, there is there is still a malting which has been going for hundreds of years, and you can tell whenever they are malting or whatever. You know, a, a couple of yeah. times a week, you suddenly get this really acute malt smell, um, which is really fills the air. Even if you're driving in the car with the windows nice. down, you really smell it. And I get it in here. Good smell, that isn't it? This is such an, oh. a wow, exciting, big, brave. And I can completely see why it's a prize-winning fragrance. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so fantastic. And there are lots of smoky, um, you know, birchy, Russian mm. leathery type things out there. But this thing is still original, all it the is, way. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, this is... It's kind of I beautiful. Did, it, it is beautiful, and I am enormously impressed by it. I have to say, even as someone who loves big, smoky fragrances, I don't think I could buy a full bottle of this. Well, there's a danger, isn't there, that if you were wearing this, someone might rush you to a hospital and say, <laughs> well, you know, have you called the fire yeah, brigade? Yeah. Are they on their way? It's really, I mean, it's really good, but again, it, yeah, I think... I mean, if you love smoky fragrances, you absolutely, yeah. like, no questions asked, have to check this out. I mean, this is like the next level up from things like Beaufort, Cœur de Noir and Tonnerre. It's, yeah. it's like, um, it's another level of, of sort of gothic splendour as well. And this is no, there, there are no big, there's no big hit of ice or super oh. to ramp everything up. This is just naturals, which is kind of unbelievable because on me, the, the Lord yeah. Jeffrey on this, it lasted for ages. Oh, it, is, it did calm, the, the sea ice did calm down after a while, but it lasted for ages. My, my score, my handle score still smells of this. And these testers were put inside that book and they're not in there anymore, by the way. Um, it's just what's absorbed into the paper. That happened in, when was it? Maybe 15th of July yep. last year? Yep. And I, could I should have brought it. I can open it for you now and it's still going strong. It's very right. beautiful though. It is. It's, it's a very, yeah, it's a little lovely. You know, for a house fire, it's very gorgeous. Last one. This is very sad. Yeah, emotional. We've I'm been, enjoying been quite, these. Quite a journey. Slow dive. That's special stuff. Um, when the Indian summer air is almost palpable. So, we, we, you know, we're inspired by India. I think a very different type of India. This is more of a lazy day in the hot sun with yeah. bees buzzing around you and kind of cigar smoke in the air. But I'm sure songs have been written about that. This, I mean... Uh, Wow, this yeah. like <laughs> um, th this this really uh, it, it, in a way this is when I saw the notes list. I don't like gourmand fra uh, fragrances and I don't really like sweet fragrances. So I wasn't excited when, oh, so when I saw this, and I was absolutely kind of knocked like uh, knocked out by this, blown away by it. It's such a thick, immediate. Um, kind of photorealistic, natural kind of honey, yeah. as if you know, as if you're you've just put your head in a beehive. Like I don't even feel it's gooey, sticky honey. But if, for me, the, the thing I get with that straight away is like, like a, I don't know, like all bran 
covered in honey. There's, yeah. there's a sort of, there's a nutty... Golden grams. Golden grams as well, yeah. absolutely, with that slight... Really stunning, isn't it? And I find, even though it's very sweet, there's something intensely savoury about this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that com it's the combination of that honey sweetness, but then, like, I don't know, I, yeah, it's like cereal, golden grams, mm. like you say, or... Oh, I can't but it's not just about that, there's also this white tobacco, this tobacco flower. Yeah. And I think actually, you know, running through all of all of these fragrances, oh, yeah. there, there is, there are great, great, great high, high, high quality florals on the whole, white florals, which are kind of yeah. running through everything. And I get it here, I think there's also a little bit of tuberose and jasmine maybe, certainly jasmine. That tobacco flower though, absolutely, now that you say it, mm. my mind, my mind can absolutely picture that. I just... It's really beautiful. When I saw it, and especially on skin, I was just, I was so wowed by this. It's so Gosh. original. You know, amongst I even of, of, of the others, I've later. just not smelt anything like this. Um, so those are the seven fragrances. Um, that, I mean, uh, that's the most beautiful for me. Well, I was going to say, can you tell which one I bought out of the seven? Oh. It, it was, it was... Um, Slow dive. And Let's have a look at the bottles, actually, because we've yeah. not done that yet, have we? No, they are, they are very simple, very elegant little uh, bottles here. And very beautiful. See, I've, made a, I, I've not had this, I bought this after Christmas, but th we included this in our winter list because although I've not had it, I mean, it's the same thing, uh, although I've not had it that long, I wore it, mm. something I do very, very rarely, I bought it and then I just wore it for the whole week. Nice. Because I got, I found it so addictive. And it was often, I, I quite like wearing a fragrance for the day, coming home, having a shower, and putting something else on in the evening. I do, yeah. Um, and actually, I was finding myself putting on this in the morning, coming home, having a shower, and putting this on in the yeah. evening. <laughs> I mean, it's glorious. I just found it so addictive. There's nothing like this that I've smelled either. I don't think anything yeah. is in this ballpark at all. There are. Wow. Yeah. This is a fantastic house. Yeah, it is. It's top, really great. top, top, top quality work. I think, you know, it's 155 euros for 15 mil, but That's they great. feel like extra. Yeah, this especially. Yeah. And they all, you know, a 50 mil will, will go a long way. I um, can't stop smelling that. It's really it's addictive, so isn't addictive. it? It's so addictive. God. It's a real, oh, you know, you, you have a conversation with someone and you go, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure I will see you at... Yeah. <laughs> later on today, yeah. <laughs> you have to kind of stop, you stop the conversation. <laughs> um, Beautiful. I mean, what I, what I find. Yeah. I feel sad in a way that we didn't really know about this house for years. And no, but I'm also glad we both had a, a, a little kind of little journey with them as well. Yeah. It's been emotional. And I think this isn't the last we're going to hear from here on Green. Yeah. I hope. I, I'd love to see what they do next. But if you have experience with this house, also if, if, you, if, if you've tried the original Voyage, um, for instance, I know there were only 250 yeah. bottles of that. And I think that had a suede note in it, which isn't in this version. So tell us how we're that compares. To see, see. Yeah. But tell us if you're. Um, Favourite ones, if you love wearing hide on a really hot day in the middle of the summer, tell us about that. I would do that. Um, but, till next time, just, happy bye. sniffing!